So this is a short introduction to the second year course called Behavioural Ecology. So I'm Jeremy Field and I'm the course convener. And the main lecturers are myself and Francis Ratniex. And we both do research into social behaviour, particularly in social insects like bees and wasps. There are also a couple of lectures by David Harper and one lecture by Ellie Leadbeater. And what's the aim of the course? Well, it's to look at animal behaviour in an evolutionary context and relate it to ecology. So the main question we're interested in is why has the behaviour we see today evolved? How does it maximise the number of copies of the genes coding for the behaviour that get passed on to future generations? Now the course is called Behavioural Ecology rather than just Animal Behaviour because we can't hope to understand an animal's behaviour without knowing about its basic ecology. The animal's ecology, if you like, and its environment set the stage on which its behaviour must evolve. Now the course starts by introducing key theoretical concepts and methods such as optimization, game theory, comparative approaches and kin selection. Then later in the course these methods are applied to specific areas of animal behaviour. So to give you a better idea I'm just going to run briefly through now a few of the topics that we cover. So we start by asking how animals make optimal decisions when they're foraging. So for example, should they, eat all, should they eat all of the food they find or just some of it? We also look at the use of phylogenetic trees to test hypotheses about the evolution of behaviour. So another example, a male chimpanzee has testes weighing 120 grams, whereas the gorilla is a much larger animal, yet its testes weigh only a measly 30 grams. How can we use a phylogeny to discover why there's that difference? Another important topic is variation in animal behaviour. Why do some individuals behave one way while others of the same sex and species use an alternative strategy? And an example there is that some female birds lay eggs in their own nests while others instead dump their eggs in another female's nest. So why is that? And this leads us on to investigate the arms race between a professional egg dumper, the cuckoo, and its hosts, like this uh, dunnock here. We also look at the logic of animal contests, which often involve fights or confrontations, yet are often settled by ritual displays, or at least without injuries to the contestants. We look at why animals sometimes commit infanticide, or sacrifice their own lives, commit suicide. Like this male red-backed spider, the smaller spider in the picture, who deliberately places himself in the female's jaws during copulation, the female is on the right. The female may oblige him by consuming him during sperm transfer. Another example is this honeybee worker who commits suicide when she stings a potential nest predator. Why does she do that? We'll also look at animal mating systems, including these male seals that fight over females, and these female antelope that fight over males. And we'll discover why there's, no, there's really no such thing as a Darwinian demon. Uh, we'll see how maths can provide insights into how animals behave the way they do. and how molecular techniques can be used to find out who really reproduces in an animal social group under the bizarre mating system of an apparently dull brown bird like the dunnock, or also to find out who lays the eggs on a wasp nest. There are also two special case study lectures where we look in depth at particular pieces of research on animal behaviour done by uh, your lecturers. And as well as the approximately 18 or 20 lectures, the course includes tutor tutorial groups with about six students per group, in which each student does a, sh a short oral presentation based on set reading and writes an assessed essay. There's also a tour of the Social Insects Laboratory, where among other things, you'll see live honeybee colonies performing the famous waggle dance and have a demonstration of honeybee colour vision. Now last year all 48 places available on the course were taken up by students. Now these are the two main course textbooks. If you want to, tr if you want to find out more about the kind of approach the course takes, um, you could try reading chapter one of the Krebs and Davis textbook. 
and we look forward to maybe seeing you on the course next autumn.